John McCain understood everything about Russia-Ukraine situation. Okay, what is this? This was linked like an hour ago. Looking at Russia, because you've also been a very strong advocate of tougher action against Russia, be it from mm. the United States, be it from the European Union, be it from NATO. Oh God, am I going to end up agreeing here with a neocon? On, on matters of Russia, I might on some, because neocons are, if nothing else, historically pretty like anti-Russian expansionism. And in this case, their expansionism has been pretty fucking destructive. So now that there is this ceasefire plan and mm -hmm. the hope is that it will hold, that probably is the best face-saving way out of this conflict, isn't it? Both for Moscow and Kiev in Ukraine. Vladimir Putin's ambitions were very well known to me and to others. He knew that uh, once Yanukovych left, he had to take Crimea because of Sevastopol. Then he tried the separatists, that didn't work. He armed the separatists, that didn't work. So then he sent in thousands uh, of Russian troops. Uh, the fact is... So far, everything he's saying is completely factually correct. ...that they were slaughtering uh, Ukrainians. There were hundreds killed, thousands in the hospitals. It's terrible. Poroshenko had no choice but to agree to a ceasefire. What is going to happen? I predict to you that it will be another step in Vladimir Putin's strategy to separate eastern Ukraine from Ukraine and perhaps a land bridge to Crimea. No, it's a very bad result. And again, we would not send weapons to the Ukrainians when they were begging for them. We wouldn't even give them intelligence because we didn't want to, quote, provoke Vladimir Putin. By showing weakness, we provoked Vladimir Putin. Who do you mean by we? The United States? The sure. United States United working States, with the EU? And, and of course the Europeans, but I wasn't surprised about the Europeans. I was deeply disappointed in the United States of America when they begged us for defensive weapons and they wouldn't even do that. In, in fact, it was, it was almost comical. They sent. God bless you, John McCain. I hope you're looking down on us from heaven and seeing us delivering like F-16s and HIMARS rocket systems to Ukraine. Smiling. MREs. Why were you not surprised by the Europeans, you say, not taking sufficiently tough action against? Because Putin? they're dependent on... Uncritical support for John McCain. I have forgotten all of our differences. <laughs> please, please do remember that ultimately the situation with Ukraine and Russia is like, like if you go back far enough, is our fault. Um, the shock doctrine that uh, we imposed, basically, that we incentivized, imposed, provided, you know, like the material uh, direction towards um, in the former Soviet states after the fall of the Soviet Union set up the antagonisms and poverty. Uh, like, like, keep in mind, the Soviet Union didn't collapse and Putin was immediately made a dictator. That happened because the Russian people felt so dispossessed, weak and useless. Um, you know, they had Yeltsin to contend with. Uh, that they, they wanted a strong man. There was a lot more we could have done. Russian energy. It's obvious. It was obvious. And the United States, it was obvious that uh, we weren't going to assist them and uh, uh, it, 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 because they don't want to, quote, provoke Vladimir Putin. And there's nothing that provokes Vladimir Putin more than weakness. We have to understand that Vladimir Putin's ambitions are the restoration of the old Russian Empire. God but damn. he has never said, has he, that he wants... He peace. was on that. No, guys, to be clear, I'm not saying Russia wasn't antagonistic to Ukraine beforehand. What I'm saying is that with better economic conditions, I don't think things would have gotten as bad in Russia or in Ukraine. Keep in mind, Ukraine was desperately poor for a long time and still is, you know, relatively speaking. Um, because of the, the, the mishandled shock doctrine and the effect of the uh, consolidation of their economy into the wealth of oligarchs and blah, 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 blah. We've talked about this before. But, like, we had a hand in a lot of that. ...in Ukraine to be incorporated into Russian territory. What he has uh, said is, well, just a few days ago, he said, I could take Kiev in two weeks. But what he has, sa what he has said is that he wants a Nova Russia, which is an old czarist phrase, which means he need, wants eastern Ukraine, he wants to make sure he keeps Crimea, and he would like to see, if he can get away with it, Moldova and the Baltics as well. 
That's what he wants to see restored. He cannot afford to see a free, democratic, prosperous Ukraine because the Russian people then would like to be like Ukraine. Well, he sure was on the ball with that one. But the Baltic states chose a different path from Russia that they did. How do you think his presidency would have been versus Obama's? Uh, well, we wouldn't have gotten Obamacare, that's for sure. We, <laughs> that's for goddamn sure. Uh, the pre-existing condition shit? Yeah, no, it definitely would have been a lot worse. However, the difference between um, Obama and McCain is infinitely smaller than that between Biden and Trump. 18% of Muslims do not accept Jews as their citizens, but far more with Roma and Muslims. You guys are so... Fu the racism that you guys demonstrate against Roma people is significantly higher than the racism any American <laughs> demonstrates for any minority group. Uh, people don't realize this, and I'm, I'm being serious. Did you know that America is significantly less racist than basically every European country? I'm not joking. It's true. By every poll like bit of polling data we have when it comes to accepting immigrants or people of other races as like members of your country or whatever else, we're less racist than all of you. Yeah, Europeans hate to admit it, but it's true. Even red states. I'm talking about America as a whole. If you select for specific states, maybe it's different. I'm done. What's Roma? The Roma is the good term for what you've probably heard before, which is gypsy. Um, it's a, they're a, they're a group of people who often form ethnic enclaves across Europe. They're known for being comparatively nomadic. They're often accused of being, uh, thieves, duplicitous, uh, swindlers, that kind of thing. Uh, uh now of course this is kind of a self-perpetuating stereotype because since they're often denied jobs and kept in ethnic enclaves, they're often very poor, which means that they do have to steal because that's how poverty works when you keep a people desperately poor and deny them opportunities they have to do what they have to do to survive so it kind of perpetuates itself but um yeah people go people go people go fucking crazy hating roma people man yeah that's you've heard the term getting gypped getting gypped is like the um is like the the european roma equivalent of what people saying getting jude which is they mean the same thing both of them are extremely racist ways of saying like I, I've been had, I've been swindled. I've, that's, that's what it means. If you ever wondered where that came from, I would say that in terms of like the relative groups of people who hate them, those two terms are basically about as bad as each other. So if you hear a person in Europe saying, oh, I got gypped on this, it's basically like hearing some dude in Kentucky going like, I got jude on that, you know? It's like the same thing. Though a lot of people say it without knowing what it means. Like a lot of people in chat right now are saying they don't know. And that's because in America, we don't have Roma people. And a lot of people in America don't even know gypsy is a negative term, you know? I mean, the only time a lot of you have even heard the term gypsy was probably in the Hunchback of Notre Dame, right? Maybe a couple of times besides that? Yes, I know you guys act... We, I know we literally do have Roma people. You know what I mean. Jesus Christ, I don't literally mean there are no Roma people here. You know what I mean. At Vosh, I saw a black guy once. Is that true? That's crazy. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> crazy. It's really funny when you read about historical accounts of, uh, of, of like, um, historical cultures encountering black people for the first time. And the first reaction of all of them seems to be to assume that the black person has, like, coal dust on them or something. And they, like, lick their thumb and try to rub it off. And then they realize it won't work. And they're like, whoa! Like, they're literally, they're like, I can only imagine this is pogging, it, like, historically, you know? Native Americans meeting African people or the Japanese meeting, um, like, Yasuke. Yasuke. The, the samurai uh, attendant, uh, just like, whoa, that's crazy, you know? Because what else are you supposed to do? You've, you've lived in Japan your entire life and everyone has been fair-skinned, unless you go far enough north, there's the Ainu people or whatever, but you know what I mean. Um, and then you see a black guy, it's like, it <laughs> The most Reddit face imaginable. The US does have Roma and the police have a special task force for them. Wait, really? Oh, Jesus, okay. I really don't think most Americans know that much about Roma people. I don't think we have a cultural conception of them. But, um, damn. The Japanese tried to clean Yasuke for hours thinking he was dirty. Isn't there a painting of that? Man, the Yasuke anime cartoon thing sucked. God, I wish it was good. It sucked so much. I'm getting a lot of education right now on Roma people, which I do appreciate. I, I will try to learn. 
Yeah, it was he was an attendant for Europeans who visited Japan, and he was black. And then I I don't know the exact story, but I think he was like, well, what if I became a samurai? And then he became a samurai, and that's pretty cool. That's actually extremely cool if you think about it. Oh yeah, here's a photo of him. How crazy is that? Oh, here we go. When was this? 1870, I want to say? No, wait, this can't be Yasuke. I'm conflating two stories. Yasuke was from like the 1500s. I'm completely uh, incorrect. I'm sorry. Um, so this is a different story of a black samurai. I, I googled um, Yasuke paintings and this showed up, but this isn't Yasuke. Uh, in 1579, Yasuke arrived in Japan in the service of the Italian Jesuit missionary Alessandro Valignano, or something, visitor of missions from the Indies in India. That's pretty crazy. Did you think there was only one black samurai? Um, there probably weren't that many. The samurai class doesn't exist anymore. Sa Japan was feudal and then military dictatorship imperial. It only became open to like global tourism and immigration pretty recently in the grand history of things, you know? Yeah, they're also pretty racist. It's the same with other races meeting white people. I always think of when the Himba tribe who lived topless were pogging at a white visitor's tits because she took off her shirt to show them how to differ. Oh, I've seen that picture. I I know the picture you're talking about. Yes. That makes sense, Saxy Jacks, yeah. No, it's probably copyright CTSH1 anyway. Here's a video on the Romani. Okay, okay. We're Listen, if we go too far down this rabbit hole, we're going to start rambling about... um. What's what's the name of the sword saint again? That one samurai who like defeated 140 people? Musashi, that's right. Musashi was pretty cool. Well, he was a sword saint. Why do people know so much about samurai? Oh, they're historically interesting. Obviously, anime has popularized them quite a bit.